It's 1958. Michael Corleone is entering a historic deal with Hyman Roth, a deal worth over $100 million. But in reality, both Michael and Roth were playing an extremely high-level, high-stakes game of chess. The Godfather 2 is full of mystery and intrigue, and some of the biggest questions we all have surround the Havana deal. Up until now, these questions have remained a mystery, but today, we will finally answer all your questions and more. The Godfather, Michael Corleone, had uplifted the Corleone empire from a somewhat small yet powerful mafia family, somewhat confined to the streets of New York, to the most powerful organization in the country, running his vast empire as if it were a Fortune 500 company. As Michael was exponentially rising in status and power, becoming more sophisticated, entering a whole new level in the game of power, so were his enemies. He was no longer dealing with local mob bosses or Sicilian chieftains. He was now dealing with a completely different kind of gangster, and so his new enemies were far more dangerous than anyone had previously faced. He needed to adapt quickly. But even so, for a man as ambitious as Michael Corleone, why would he just stop here? Why not see how far he can go? Wouldn't you? So what's next? How was he going to get to the next level? That's where Hyman Roth comes in. Roth was cunning and probably the most Machiavellian character in The Godfather, and he understood two vital things about Michael, what he wants and how he thinks. Roth carefully analyzed Michael from afar and realized that he desperately wanted to shake off his family's criminal reputation and rebrand it into one of America's wealthiest and most established families. Never been done before. Not even your father would dream that such a thing could be possible. Michael wholeheartedly believed that there are literally no limits to what he could achieve, so why not aim at reaching the most powerful position in the country? A man that wants to be president of the United States, having the cash to make it possible. So Roth played on this, and so made him an offer he couldn't refuse, and this is how the Havana deal came into place. His vision. Hyman Roth, even at his old age, was extremely ambitious, and what he envisioned was truly something extraordinary and captured the imagination of all the top bosses of the criminal underworld, including the one who had now become the most powerful and wealthy, Don Michael Corleone. Roth envisioned creating a new and improved Las Vegas, a Monte Carlo of the Caribbean, and having a partnership with the Cuban president himself would mean that they would essentially be above the law, and so no one could even compete with them. Plus, the fact that it was only 90 miles from the U.S. mainland made it perfect to become a base of operations, as it was far enough from the reach of the law, but close enough to their operations in the country, especially that they were beginning to feel pressured by law enforcement. So this would be the safe haven they've always wished for, to continue to operate their criminal empires. Although hotels and casinos themselves will be extremely profitable, Surpassing any and all of their current operations in Vegas, the real money and what could be their biggest source of income and the whole appeal of this deal comes from something else. Money laundering. With these new ventures and legitimate income sources, they then use them to launder all their ill-gotten gains from across the country and even the world, allowing them to have access to clean money and not to raise too much suspicion. But this very audacious vision came with a hefty price tag, so it was by no means going to be cheap, and Roth understood this completely. The venture would cost over $100 million, which for context would be worth around $1.1 billion today. What was the deal? A deal of this magnitude was somewhat complex, with many people and interests involved, but here's what you need to know. Roth and Associates were going to build and purchase a series of hotels and casinos in Cuba, specifically in Havana. But the genius of this deal was that they were not going to put up all the money themselves, and they were still going to have the controlling interest. So how were they going to get the $100 million needed? Where the money was coming from? Well, that's where bribing the Cuban president comes in. You see, the Cuban government was going to invest $50 million into the venture. As for the other half, they were going to use their influence on the Teamsters Union to fund the other $50 million. But here's how Michael's $2 million comes into play. The Price To enter this deal with Roth and become a partner, Michael would need to put up the initial $2 million that was going to be used to bribe the Cuban president so he could allow the deal to commence which was quite a large amount, but Michael understood that having the actual president on your payroll comes with a lot of benefits. 
In return for putting such a large amount of cash, Michael was to not only then become an official partner in the Havana deal, but also take over all of Roth's interests, specifically all of Roth's operations in South Florida, and now the hotels and casinos in Cuba, but at the time of Roth's death or retirement. I turn over all my interest in the Havana operation to his control. So this was quite a large gamble for Roth. He had a lot of faith in this deal. Michael was basically going to inherit most of his businesses and assets. And so, you can probably tell this was one hell of a deal. It makes it much more clear why Michael did not want this deal to be disturbed or at risk in any way. The important thing is that nothing interfere with our plans for the future. Yours and mine. Who was involved? The key players. So this deal was not exactly just between Michael and Roth, but actually involved many other powerful entities and individuals, most notably the Cuban president, other mafia families, the Teamsters Union, as well as a few senators and governors. Michael and Roth just had a side deal alongside the main one. Why did Roth want Michael's two million? Why he needed him to remain in the deal? So why did Roth want Michael's two million dollars? We all know that Roth was wealthy enough to put up the money himself, so why was he so angry at Michael? Firstly, you have to understand the reasons behind why he even allowed Michael to enter the deal. To start with, having Michael as part of the deal would make the other partners more confident and comfortable in getting involved. Michael at the time was extremely powerful and had many connections to some extremely influential people. Therefore, he was going to leverage Michael's name and reputation. But when Michael began to question the venture's likelihood of success, directly contradicting Roth's assessment, he feared that Michael was going to put the deal in jeopardy. The other reason was that he, let's just say, he didn't want to be Mo Greened. But probably the most important reason that Roth wanted Michael to be part of the deal was to, as I'm sure you know, get his revenge. His revenge would come in two forms. The first is by stealing as much money from Michael, who was supposedly to be completely oblivious to the fact that he was being played, and we'll get to that very soon. The next and final reason was to finally take him out and crush the Corleone family. Therefore, his primary goal was to use this deal to lull Michael into a false sense of security, making him ease his guard, and when he least expects it, strike. But as we know, things would end up quite differently. Therefore, Roth initially wanted to use this as a smokescreen to hide his real intentions. We'll get to this strategy a bit more in our video discussing Law 3 of Power. With that out of the way, the question you have now why? is why did Michael hold the money back? You know the obvious answer. But what if I told you we finally found the final missing piece to this puzzle? And it's something that will shock you. Why did Michael hold the money back? What actually happened to the $2 million? Most people think that it was on purpose, that since Michael was suspicious of Roth, he then held back the money, which makes sense, but it's not actually true. This will shock you but it was not Michael holding the money back. He only became uncertain of the deal itself only after witnessing the rebel situation firsthand. He still wanted to play along and so had no reason not to send money, even if he knew Roth was after him. In fact, here's what exactly Michael was scheming. Michael wanted to finally land the deal, secure his new moneymaker, and only then take out Roth and Ola which is why he made Fredo personally bring the money, which I'm sure you would agree that sending Fredo with $2 million in cash doesn't seem like a smart move on Michael's part. You imagine that, huh? $2 million in the seat next to me in that plane? But he did, however, trust him, and at the time, that was all he needed. Of course, after seeing the rebel situation, he knew the deal was not going to pass, so he put all of his focus on getting rid of Roth and Ola. I've already made my move. I'm in Roth, I'll never see the new year which was when he actually held the money back, not before. So it's not as simple as we thought. And now the question becomes, if it wasn't Michael, then who was it? Take a moment and quickly comment who you think was responsible. Here's what happened. Michael actually sent the money to Cuba a few days before. However, the courier that he sent was then betrayed by Roth and Ola, who then took him out, stole the money, and blamed it on Michael. And this was just the icing on the cake for Roth. He wanted to squeeze as much out of the Corleone family before burning it to the ground, slightly quenching his thirst for revenge. At the same time, enjoy watching Michael, who seemed totally oblivious to what was going on. 
and putting Michael on the defensive just shows how cunning and Machiavellian he truly was. So what actually had happened was that Michael only began thinking of holding the money back after the money didn't arrive and had realized that the rebel situation was not under control and was certain without a shadow of a doubt that it was Roth all along. After it's over, then you take me home in a military car alone for my protection. Before I reach my hotel, I'll be assassinated. How did Michael know he was to be assassinated in Cuba? Michael seemed quite certain that this was going to take place. So who told him? Was Michael just testing Fredo? Did the president inform Michael or was it someone else? It's actually a lot more straightforward. After Roth confirmed Michael's suspicion, slightly breaking the whole wise mentor persona, it became quite obvious that Roth was the one after him. He understood that the only reason he was still alive was the fact that Roth wanted more money from Michael. And now, the money was in Cuba. He literally had no use for him. Everything else was all set. Roth had the deal in place and ready to go. All that was left was to remove Michael from the picture. Michael understood that was the smartest move Roth could make. He could assassinate him while he's vulnerable, outside his own territory, and then blame it on the rebels. A truly masterful move. And with Michael gone, even if they realized he was responsible, he wouldn't need to worry too much about any retaliation from the Corleone family, since it would be in complete disarray. But Michael was three moves ahead of Roth and had organized an escape route. I have a question for you. Do you think Fredo informed the Cuban authorities about Michael attempting to assassinate Roth? We'll cover it in an upcoming video, but I'm very curious to know what you think. Roth's Original Plan Of course, Roth had no real intention of actually fulfilling his end of the deal, but when Michael survived, he needed to play along. We mentioned this earlier, the deal was almost too good to be true, and it actually was. But other than the fact that Michael was still in the picture, the deal and the vision was exactly the same. He was adamant on building something that had never been done before. Why did Michael continue to work with Roth? Something that may seem quite strange is that we know Michael knew Roth was the one behind his assassination attempt, not Pentangeli. So why would Michael continue working with Roth if he knew without a shadow of a doubt that Roth was after him? Why would someone like Michael, who proved to be a capable strategist and a top player in the game of power, make what seems to be an illogical move? The answer can be found after we identify who Michael decided to bring with him. As you know, he didn't bring any of his top enforcers. Neither Rocco or Al Neri were involved. Instead, Michael sends Busetta, a highly skilled and experienced assassin who was specifically hired directly from Sicily. Essentially, he was Michael's Luca Brazzi. Michael didn't want to risk putting his top guys on this task in case something went wrong, especially that they were entering what is considered Roth's turf. But there's also another reason. It was so he could lure out the traitor as he had to solve the mystery before taking out Roth, and at the time, he still had no idea who it was. You see, all our people are businessmen. Their loyalty is based on that. So this is why in the beginning, he just wanted to keep Roth at ease. Making Roth completely relaxed gives him the opportunity to strike. And as we mentioned earlier, before actually foreseeing the revolution in Cuba, he also wanted the deal to go through and inherit Roth's fortune. What if Michael was taken out? Finally, something that we've all thought of, a question with no clear answer, is that what if Michael had not survived? What if Roth's plan had actually succeeded from the very beginning? Well, to start with, the Havana deal would continue as Roth had wanted from the beginning, now having avenged his longtime friend, basking in the glory of his victory. But then the question becomes, who would take over the Corleone family? And what would be its fate? And that's exactly what we uncover in this video. And if you want to know more about Roth, discover the answers to all the mysteries, questions, and all of the other intricacies of The Godfather 2, watch this playlist. Thank you for watching, and make sure you're subscribed so that you can be part of the Culture Mafia.